Well, here we go. The new BMW M2 has finally touched down in Australia and we are about to take it for a drive. I don't know what you're thinking. Should I be buying a two-door compact, high-performance sports coupe? Will I be able to uh, live with the car? Can I put the kids in it to go to school? Is there enough room in the boot to do my shopping? And you know what? I'm going to stop you right there because if you are watching this and you are considering an M2, all of that stuff is, well, it's kind of insignificant. Yes, there are back seats. Yes, there are boots. I drove it down here. It's doing eight litres per hundred on the highway. You can put people in the car. You can put shopping in the back. Tick that box. What you're really here, and be honest, is to see, is the M2 the muscular platform that BMW really wants it to be? This is gonna be the last BMW M car engineered as an internal combustion only vehicle. This is gonna be the last BMW M car to be engineered with a manual transmission. This is a bookend car. This is your chance to own a little piece of motoring history. So sure, it can go to the shops, tick that box. What's it like in a performance environment? Well, let's find out. To discover if our little blue M2 can not go to the shops or do the school run because you're too busy having fun, we've come to the Bryant Park hill climb track in the spookily named Haunted Hills just outside of Moey in Victoria. The 2023 BMW M2 is priced from $121,700 before options and on-road costs, regardless of whether you choose an 8-speed automatic or, like our car, a 6-speed manual transmission. The littlest M is powered by a 338-kilowatt, 550-newton-metre, 3-litre inline 6-cylinder twin-turbo petrol engine and its rear-wheel drive. So whichever way you shake it, that's a pretty entertaining combination. With the manual, it's good for a 4.3-second sprint to 100 kilometres an hour and will top out at 250 kilometres an hour unless you buy the $14,500 carbon seats, in which case you're good for 285 kilometres an hour. And not that that matters too much, but the M2 consumes 10.2 litres per 100 kilometres on a claimed combined cycle but will cruise happily at 8 litres per 100 kilometres on your way to and from the racetrack. Now, rhetoric aside, before we do get our backsides trackside, there is an important part of this car to discuss, and that is its beating heart. This is the S58 BMW engine. Now, it's a familiar sounding name because this is the same inline three litre six cylinder twin turbo that you find in the M3 and the M4. It's been slightly detuned in the M2, 338 kilowatts, 500 newton meters, if you can call that detuned in any way, shape or form. But it is a real powerhouse in this car. And I think the other thing to notice, on the outside is just the footprint of the M2. Now, we're not going to go through all of the styling uh, choices and, and sort of bulbous bits and pieces. We're not really going to talk about the, the Zandvoort blue paint and how it kind of looks like a Hyundai. But what you can do is just look at that footprint. You've got two 75 mil tyres at the front, two 85 mil tyres at the back on 19 and 20 inch wheels staggered. This thing has got a tremendously wide footprint. It is basically designed for going out there. So without further ado, let's go out there. let's just cover off some of the basics. This M2 is manual and that's, I don't know if that's going to be the one that you choose. And if you're buying this car as a bit of a bookend or a bit of a, a, a treat to yourself to say this is what cars were once like, then maybe the manual is a choice. And it's quite a nice gate. It's uh, got a, a rev matching function that you can turn on or off if you really want so that it can be, well, perhaps a little bit more showy than, than you normally are. Now, in terms of living with the M2, I know we sort of made a bit of a joke that it doesn't really matter, but if you are watching this and you just want that little bit more validation, the back seats are okay, the boot is okay. It's actually really good on a tour. I've done quite a bit of long driving in this so far. Uh, and on the freeway, you're sitting in, in well into to single figures for your fuel consumption. Uh, the adaptive suspension works well, even on country roads. The adaptive LED headlights are good at night. So it ticks a lot of boxes as far as a car that you can, you can actually use and live with, as well as have a fair amount of fun with. Now let's talk about fun, because really that's why we're here. We are in the car's absolute standard setting here. Now we're putt-putting around uh, Bryant Park or the, uh, the Haunted Hills Hill Climb track in, in Gippsland in Victoria. There's a very tight track, it's a very technical track, and arguably in the old M2 it was a great track because the car could stretch its legs, you could get a fair amount of performance out of it, uh, and, and it would feel fun. 
But this car is so much more powerful and so much faster than the old M2 that now Haunted Hills feels a little tight. For your fun in a BMW M2, obviously like all M cars, you've got the M mode settings. Now you can configure a lot of functions of the car, you can configure the engine dynamics, uh, the, the, uh, the suspension, the brakes, the sound, all sorts of bits and pieces. And the M2 or the M1 and M2 buttons here on the wheel basically allow you to store some of those presets for quick access. I've just hit M1, which I've got set up as a sporty but not over the top function. I've kept the traction control on. I've got the, uh, the engine in its most responsive mode. And as we start to come out of here, and I've got Paul Lucas on board as well, who has to watch the screen and manage what we're doing. I don't want to give him a bit of motion sickness, but if we power out of here, we can still feel the traction control cutting in as the car begins to really wind up what it can do with its grip. And it's like I said earlier, the amount of rubber that this car has that it can put on the road, when you've got the car's traction systems turned on, it's actually tremendously grippy. Like we're feeling the back end moving around, but not so much that we're finding that the car is, well, in any way uncomfortable or insecure on the track. And you can probably tell it's got a fair amount of ability as well to come through here, to pick up speed, to change direction. That S58 is a ripper engine. And it's pretty fair to note too that due to the technical nature of the Haunted Hills track, we're not even going over road speeds. We're basically spending our time uh, between sort of 80 and 100 on some of these corners, allowing the car to power up <laughs> and pick up speed. It's only just here that you're hitting triple figures before you've got to go on the brakes, but you get there so quickly uh, in the car in this setting. Now, bottom line, whether you've got a Lucas on board or not, or whether you're on <laughs> a track like Haunted Hills or perhaps a proper circuit where you can really stretch the legs of this thing, the M2 is so much fun. It's a little bit of a handful because of that short wheelbase, but it's got so much ability to basically get you with a huge grin on your face to a point where you can become a far better driver in a car like this because there's so much performance capability and playability of the chassis that it means that as you enjoy this car and get better, the car is there to respond to those needs. And I tell you what, it really is a great little thing. And I think if it's going to be the bookend of this level of BMW performance accessibility from an internal combustion engine and a manual transmission, it's an absolute cracker. Now it's worth noting that things can get a lot more fun once you drop your videographer off and really start to explore the M2's power band. It's a very, very entertaining little car that can challenge you perhaps a little too much if you're trying too hard to look cool. Now normally this is the bit where I stand next to the car and I say now like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff and please do that anyway. Uh, and go through a bit of a summary. But realistically, we started this video saying that you're already on the path to M2 ownership and you're basically watching this for just a little bit of validation. You're wanting to say, well, is this gonna be the car that I need? And I'm telling you, if you're already down that rabbit hole and you're already considering the M2, then just buy one. It is so much fun. And if you get any pushback from your family, tell them James said it's all right. Just say, look, this guy on YouTube seems like a nice bloke. He said it's okay. Just to, to give the family that little bit of reassurance that you are making the right decision in buying the new BMW M2. Because I tell you what, I'm pretty tempted. <laughs> Now a tip for young players is not to go and do this right after you've had a coffee because you're left and right and up and down. It's not a good idea.